You want to make a beat in Ableton, but there's only one problem. I don't know what any of this shit is and I'm fucking scared. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a fully finished beat in Ableton Live completely from scratch in less than an hour. If you stay all the way until the end and follow all these instructions, by the end of this video, you're going to have a fully finished track that you can show to your friends or release on SoundCloud. From selecting the right sounds to crafting an effective drum beat or melody, we're gonna cover all the key basics as well as all those little tricky elements that a lot of new producers get stuck in, such as arrangement, mixing, and coming up with ideas. I'm gonna be giving to you all the samples and Ableton assets you're gonna need to follow along throughout this video. And we're gonna conclude this video with a super secret formula for putting that final touches on your track that's gonna make your track sound professional with zero third-party plugins. Also, I just dropped a completely free monthly care package system. Every month I give you guys a free Ableton device, some free samples, and some free videos and whatnot. So I'll go ahead and link that up there as well. Let's get into the tutorial. So let's do a really brief rundown of what we're looking at when we open up Ableton Live. In this course, I wanted to give you just the meat and potatoes of what you'll need to make a beat. As far as navigation goes, I have a more comprehensive video about that that I'm gonna link up here. But for this course, we're gonna focus on four main sections. The browser section, the lower section, the timeline, and the track title bar. Then we're also gonna to touch on this row of buttons up here, which is gonna be our transposition controls. So how to record, play, stop, loop, all that good stuff. Our browser section over here is gonna be where all of our stuff lives. So all of our instruments, all of our samples, anything that we're reaching for can be found in our browser section over here. The lower menu is gonna change depending on what we have selected. So if, for instance, if we have a kick sample in here, this is gonna either gonna be our audio editor our chain of effects, or if we're manipulating MIDI, this is gonna be our piano roll or our MIDI notes. So this, the lower menu is gonna change depending on what we're using it for. Over here in the track title bar, a couple options that are worth noting is the arm button. So if we're gonna record onto a track, be that audio or MIDI, we need to let Ableton know which track we wanna record on when we press record. That's where the arm button's gonna come in. So notice if we record and we have this MIDI track armed, It's now gonna pick up the signal from our keyboard or a MIDI instrument or whatever we're doing. Now, if we wanna do the same thing, but we wanna record audio, like the microphone I'm talking to now, we would arm an audio track. So audio and MIDI are two completely different types of tracks. Now I would come here, select arm the track that we're recording onto. Yo, yo, recording, recording. Yo, yo, recording, recording. And if we are in fact recording any sort of audio signal, we just wanna make sure that we have external in selected and then that we're getting a signal or a green bar right here. Then we arm it. Yo, yo, yo recording, recording. And we're recording our signal. So for now, we're gonna not gonna focus on that. That's just very important to distinguish if you are recording your own MIDI or audio. So the first thing we're gonna do is determine what our beats per minute is gonna be. BPM is gonna be the speed of your track. There's a couple ways to do this. For this example, we're gonna make a kind of hip hop style trap beat. The standard BPM for this is right around 130 or 140. If we have a BPM in our head, we can use this tap control to set it. So we can just kind of tap it in the BPM of what we hear in our head. I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to 135. The first thing we're gonna do is get a drum pattern going. In order to do this, we're not gonna use any of the Ableton stock samples. This is gonna bring us to our first important topic of producing a beat, and that's sample selection. If we don't have the right samples to choose from and aren't using them correctly, no matter what we do, our track's never gonna sound good. I usually veer away from Ableton stock samples for this reason. There's some really good ones in there, but not exactly for what we're going for. So I'm gonna give you guys a completely free drum loop in the description below to kind of get started with. So when we start to put together our drum beat, a couple things to note. One, we're gonna go ahead and turn the metronome on. So this option up here is gonna turn on the metronome, which is basically telling us where each beat is. Now there's no right or wrong way to formulate a beat, but one thing you wanna consider is a kick or low frequencies kind of gives us a sense of landing or the ground, whereas higher frequencies like a snare or a hi-hat kind of feels like they're bringing us up. So that's something to take into consideration when you're placing together your drum beat. So we're gonna start with a kick and a snare groove. So we're just kind of feeling this and seeing what kind of vibes with us. And we're gonna do this over the course of four bars. So we're gonna end right here on the five. We're gonna highlight this area. So we're just gonna click and drag from the one to the five, and then we're gonna press command L. That's gonna loop this section. So as we're working on the section, it's just gonna keep playing in a circle. So that's gonna allow us to work on it without having to start back from the beginning every time.
Typically, the snare is always going to be on the three, which is in the middle of each bar. So I'm going to highlight this and Command D to duplicate this. And now we have our snare on every three. So once we have our basic kick and our snare pattern, we're going to move on to the percussive elements. The percussive elements are going to be our hi-hats, our shakers, our tambourines, anything that's a really high frequency and uh, typically is related to some sort of drum. So like a cymbal, a ride, a hi-hat. The role the percussive elements play in our drums is a very big one. It's basically the glue for the kick and the snare that kind of ties them together and introduces a lot of groove and feel to everything. Typically for drums, I like to use audio because audio is easier to see. It's also easier to manipulate. For our hi-hats, we're going to use MIDI though. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to our MIDI clip here and we're going to Highlight it and press Shift Command M. This is gonna give us a blank MIDI clip. Now we're going to find a trap hat. Now when we select it, what's gonna happen is this gonna turn into what's known as a simpler. So simpler is Ableton's basic version of a sampler, hence the name. And basically what this allows us to do is now play this with MIDI. So instead of an audio clip, if we arm our track, we can now play this. And this is important because we can play in different pitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our blank MIDI clip here. We're going to start by placing one on every eighth. So that's going to be eight on every bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to copy this pattern all the way up to the end. Now, an amateur producer would stop here and leave this as is. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I see newer producers make. Leaving everything flat, on grid, and lifeless. And it doesn't have any groove, it doesn't have any humanality or feel to it. We're going to implement something that's known as groove. Groove can be described as adjustments in length, pitch, velocity, how late or how early it is. All these little imperfections, we'll call them, is what really gives a humanization and the feel to your beat. And when everything is directly on grid in the same volume level, it's super robotic and our ears pick up on that. So we're gonna go ahead and groove these, and in order to do so, we could come in here and adjust these manually, but Ableton has actually thought of this in giving us groove pulls. And what groove pulls are are basically these imperfections already baked into Ableton, so we can come in here, the shuffles and the imperfections in them and pick the one we like. Let's go with this one. So we're gonna double click it, and now we're gonna to go to groove and select whichever one we picked. So this is gonna be pretty subtle, but pay attention for the difference before and after we implement this groove. We're gonna leave it off for the first time around, then we're gonna turn it on for the second loop. Again, very subtle, but it's adding little shuffles here and there. So it's adding changes in the length, changes in the velocity, and it's giving a little bit more feel to our beat. I like to kind of refer to that as head noddiness. It's kind of like those hesitations that kind of make you move and make your head nod. Another thing we can do is we can randomize the velocity. So velocity is how hard something's hit typically, and it's gonna equate in MIDI to volume. I'm gonna select all these and select randomize velocity. Now, every time it hits, they're gonna be a little bit different. The last thing we can do to really add some groove and some feel to these hats, or we're gonna use what's known as track delay. So track delay is a feature in Ableton where we can actually delay the entire track by milliseconds. And this is gonna kind of make them feel late, and again, add a little bit more movement and humanization to our, our hi-hats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to track settings, and if you don't see this, you can go to view, arrangement, track controls, track options, and then this will show here. And we're gonna delay these hi-hats by 20 milliseconds, so they're gonna be 20 milliseconds late. Now this is pretty much as boring as a beat's gonna get. And in order to spice this up, we wanna start implementing some new drum elements. So I see a lot of producers kind of start with just the hi-hats, the kick and the snare and kind of call it there. We wanna keep this as interesting as possible and keep our listeners captivated. So in order to do that, we're gonna implement some new drums. So for these, we're gonna use audio clips and let's grab an open hat.
One thing to think about when you're placing your percussive elements is you want them to work like glue between your kick and your snare. So you really want them to accent the relationship between the kick and the snare. So a lot of times I'll do like a hi-hat roll into my snare or to kind of like tell you that a snare or a kick's coming. So we're gonna do an open hi-hat into our snare. And then maybe off this kick, we're gonna go ahead and add some variation in our hi-hat. So we're gonna cut this section out above this kick here. We're gonna click on it. Command A to select all the MIDI clips. And then we're gonna hit divided by two. So this is basically gonna play them twice as fast. Maybe we want this last one to go super fast. And on this last bar here, we're gonna do what's known as triplet grit. So using triplets is super common in trap. It's kind of sounds like offbeat a little bit and wonky. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and select this clip. We're gonna command two, so we have bigger grid values, command three. And now this is gonna put us on triplet. And it's gonna sound something like this. Notice how the hats are kind of accenting and playing along with the kick and the snare. The last thing we're gonna do with these hats is we're gonna implement some pitch changes. So in order to do that, we're gonna change these notes. So we're gonna click on our MIDI clip, go over to notes, and then we're going to move these up or down so we can kind of get those pitch bends we like. So now we have a lot of movement going on with our hats. We have the shuffle and the automation and the panning. We have the pitch, we have the velocity, we have the grid, all that is kind of moving around, adding a lot of movement and feel to our drums. So there's a lot more we could do, but we're gonna leave it here just for the sake of moving on. So we have a lot of movement, it's not repetitive at all. We have an interesting four bar loop for our drums. So we're gonna hit the track title bar, we're gonna hit Command A and then Command G. And this is gonna group all these so we can just come up here and press Command R to rename this. Drums, and now we can collapse this so we don't have to look at it while we're working on the rest of our elements. It's not taking up our whole screen. The next elements we're gonna focus on is gonna be the mid range. So typically in any track we have three or four different elements. We have the drums, which we just kind of covered. We have all the mid-range elements, so that's gonna be instruments, vocals, synths, plucks, guitars, pianos. All that's gonna be mid-range elements. And then we're gonna have the bass. So this is gonna be the 808s, the sub bass. So now we're gonna create our melody. So for this example, I'm gonna use drippy cave pluck. It's basically just going for something that's matching the vibe of what we're trying to accomplish. And we're gonna actually do this super cool trick. So I can't efficiently teach music theory in under an hour or 10 minutes. So we have a super cool workaround for generating a melody and not knowing anything about music theory. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to pick a track with a melody that we like in it. So any track you like that you have the audio file for, uh, that you like the melody, we're gonna choose that. Um, I'm gonna grab one of my own here. So this is a random melody sample I have. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and select Convert Melody to New MIDI Track. Now Ableton has a capacity to convert audio to MIDI. It's not super accurate, but it's at least enough typically to give us an idea of what we're going for so we can kind of build off that. So in converting this, we actually got a pretty good conversion here and we're gonna move this MIDI clip up to our cave sample, up to our instrument. And I'm gonna hit Command A to select all the MIDI clips and then Command U, which is to quantize them, so to put them on grid. So that's a pretty good start. However, we want a little bit more body and a little bit more uh, texture and character to this plug. So we're gonna layer it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Command D. So now we have two versions of this. So 
So now we have a lower layer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start deleting notes and kind of work off certain notes. So we're kind of getting like articulation here. So let's just keep our root notes, which is just E over and over again. <laughs> So what I did here is I took a little piece of this melody and then I chopped it and I sped it up times three. So I used this divided by two sign to speed it up and then I pitched it up one octave. So I grabbed all these, shift command A, shift up. And now what we have here is we have basically an arpeggiated version of the first part of this melody playing. <laughs> So we're going to use all these pieces to kind of put them together, but the last thing we need to do is add our sub frequency. So this is going to be our big boom, our, our sub bass. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab an 808, and again, these will be available in the sample pack. <laughs> With our 808, since they're a low frequency like our kick, we want them to line up typically with our kick. So we don't need one in every kick, but typically we want them all, we want all the 808s to line up with a, with a kick. Now we're gonna implement a technique that's known as sidechain compression. So compression is something that we're gonna to touch on briefly in a little bit, but basically compression is volume automation. So if we have volume levels that are all over the place, we can use compression to kind of glue them together and get them closer in volume to other sounds or within the same sound. So sidechain compression is basically taking the signal of one track and using it to turn down or manipulate uh, the signal of another track. So we're gonna to toss a compressor on our, on our sub bass here and then we're gonna hit this little arrow, sidechain, audio input from, and we're gonna select kick. So what's happening here is every time the kick hits, it's telling the 808 to turn down the volume. The reason we're doing this is because our kick and our bass are both low frequencies. And so if they're playing at the same time, they're gonna sum up and it's gonna create problems in our mix. So we're gonna use sidechain compression and we're going to edge this arrow down until we start to see some gain reduction here. We want a quicker attack, not super quick, but we want it right around 0.5. And now we'll hear that when the kick is playing, the 808's ducking. So they're fitting together like a puzzle piece. This is a really big step that a lot of newer producers glaze over that definitely can prevent you from having a professional sounding mix. You always want to maintain some sort of breaks in your 808s because the more breaks we have, the more impactful they sound. So little breaks to kind of bring them in can kind of accentuate them quite a bit. And now to kind of add some more flavor and some more variation to our beat, let's introduce like a chant or something like that. So now we have a, a decent base to work with. Now we're gonna get into some mixing stuff. So this is definitely a lot of areas where a lot of newer producers fall short. And this is actually some very incremental adjustments we're gonna make, gonna to totally separate our track from an amateur track. So the way I like to do this is the first thing I do is group all of my mid-range elements. So that's gonna be everything that's not our sub bass or our drums. So shift, arrow, 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 command G to group them. We're gonna name this mids. Now we're gonna put a glue compressor on them. So like we just talked about, compressing is kind of like 
gluing all the volume levels in relation to each other so everything's kind of closer in volume. A little bit of glue compression on your groups is always a good idea. If you don't understand compression at all, uh, I totally didn't for a long time. And to kind of help you start to develop a understanding of how to use compression, um, I recommend grabbing this plugin. It's called Compressor Buddy. I'll link it in the description. And basically what it does is it shows you what's taking place when you're using compression. So we can look at our um, waveform here and we can see what we're actually doing when we're compressing something. So we can notice how everything's getting closer in volume. Definitely a game-changing plugin. This really kind of changed the way I looked at compression. For our mid-range elements, we don't really need any low frequencies in there. The only thing we want low frequencies coming from is our sub bass. We want a tight, clean sub bass. So we're gonna go ahead and grab an EQ and we're gonna chop out the lows. So let's briefly touch on what exactly an EQ is and what we're looking at when we take a look at an EQ. So if we pop open our EQ here, As many of us know, we basically have our frequencies low to high. So down here in this range, it's all gonna be our sub frequencies. So pretty much anything below 100 is gonna be sub frequencies. 100 to 1K is where a lot of like your low mids live. So kind of your kick, a little bit of the low range frequencies of your mid group. And then one to 10K is gonna be like our snare, uh, the upper parts of our mid range elements, all that kind of stuff. And then 10K and above is kind of just like air and crispness and whatnot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut out the lows of our mids group because we don't really need these. So we're gonna click this headphone icon here. That's gonna allow us to hear what we're cutting out because we don't wanna cut out too much and remove fundamental frequencies of why we chose the sounds. So we're gonna hold down the one and we're gonna listen. And these bass frequencies down here we just cut out. We don't really need those. They're not really contributing to the sound. They're just taking up space from where our sub bass is going to sit. So it can be the most impactful. So typically I would cut my mids group, I would say around 150. It, de it depends on the track, depends on the sounds. But somewhere in this range, typically between these two bars right here. So group processing is a huge part of mixing, basically processing things together as kind of their, they sit on the frequency spectrum and then using group processing to kind of glue everything together. So we have our drums here. And if we process our drums together, it's gonna make them sound more in common with each other. So we're gonna use some like coloring tools to do that. So I'm gonna grab a saturator, which basically brings out harmonics. can use like the amp and just a little bit of light group processing so they sound similar. One thing to know about EQing is that all sounds pretty much always sit in the same spots on EQs. So typically what we're looking for in any song is we wanna have our peak up here, so our low frequencies, and then it's slowly slanting down. This is because of something known as the pink noise curve. Basically our ears are more sensitive to higher frequency sounds and less sensitive to low frequency sounds. So if we have a nice little curve here on our EQ, especially on our master, we know we're doing something right. If we have like a huge peak or something looks out of place, that way we know we have to address something. So our drums are sounding pretty good. Our 808 sounding pretty good. Now we're gonna get all of our mid-range elements to kind of sit good in relation with each other. So notice how it sounds like people talking over each other. That's because we haven't done any mixing yet. 
when we're mixing, the main thing we're doing is adjusting volume. So we have to decide which of these things are sitting up front, which one do we want closer to the listener, which ones can be tucked away, and utilize panning to kind of put stuff to the left or to the right. So I would say the main element that we're focusing on that we really want the listener to hear is gonna be this pluck. And so we wanna put this in front as possible. And in order to do that, we need to do a couple things. One, take away the reverb. So when we're using reverb, reverb is pushing something away. It's a spatial effect. So when we think about it, like if we're in a parking garage and someone's talking really far away from you, we hear a lot of reverb. That's telling our ears that something's far away. Uh, if we reduce this reverb, it's gonna move this uh, pluck closer to us. Another way to move something closer to the listener is to add some saturation. So saturation adds harmonics to things. So in adding more body to it, it makes it sound bigger and closer to us. Now we kind of have this chant that's in the way. They're kind of sitting both in the same spot. So we're gonna pan to kind of give these each their own space. So we're gonna pan the drippy cave flex to the left and we're gonna pan this to the right. Now we're not only giving the listeners like more to listen to, some more around them, we're giving everything its own space. So we have the chant over here, we have the plucks over here. And this buzzing string, we're really gonna tuck this away. So we're gonna turn the volume down and we're going to go ahead and use this more as an effect. So like some ear candy in the background kind of deal. And a big aesthetic of trap and bass music and, and all that kind of stuff is having stuff duck from the kick that doesn't need to duck. So we need the 808 to duck so because they're low frequencies. But if we command C to copy this compressor and then we paste this compressor on the mids group so the mids are also ducking from the kick, we're going to get a really big accentuated kind of kick. So the cool part about grouping things and getting everything sounding good in relation to the group is now we only have three elements that we have to mix to get them sitting in good with each other. So we have our kick and our 808, and now we're just gonna focus on the volume leveling here. One thing I will note is since our 808 is gonna be our loudest frequency, if the 808's not sounding loud, which is something that I see a lot of people struggle with, we're not gonna turn the 808 up, we're gonna turn everything else down because chances are our 808 is already right at our ceiling for as loud as it can get. So we're gonna go ahead and turn these drums down by negative three dB. We'll turn up our headphones if we have to. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna toss an EQ on our main and just make sure we have that shape we're looking for. And we could really play around with these, this pluck and this kind of main melody, speed them up, slow them down, switch, up, switch them off, and we can arrange an entire track out like that. And then the last thing we wanna do is we wanna put a limiter on our master. A limiter is gonna stop any sounds that exceed zero dB or the loudest they can be uh, from being exported so we don't have clipping that we don't want. Now, this is pretty much the fundamentals of making our beat. So to kind of reiterate, we have our drums, we have our sample selection on our drums, we have our grooves, we have our melody that we're repurposing to kind of introduce other elements. We're picking the right sounds and we're implementing some slight panning and volume adjustments to mix. Now, I could only cover so much in an hour. I just wanted to give you guys the absolute basics of producing a beat. 
uh, some things to keep an eye out for. With all that being said, if you want to take something like this and turn it more into something like this. I did just release a complete start to finish 30 day masterclass on how to produce music. Basically contains all the industry secret tips I've learned throughout the 10 years I've been producing, working with Grammy winning artists, going to the top paid music production schools in the nation. And I basically packaged all that and gave it to you at a super affordable price. If you made it to the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a 90% off coupon. Use coupon Ableton12 and it's gonna take it off 90% for you. It contains 77 modules, everything you're ever gonna to need to know to produce professional quality music. You can take this hobby and turn it into a career like I have. Uh, you can produce for artists, you can make money selling beats, you can tour, you can do all that stuff. And I'm gonna give you every single tool you're gonna to need to do that or it's fully refundable. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I'll see you next time. Mark, mark, mark.